Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Here is the 12th lecture of the series, Fracture, Fatigue and Failure of Materials. In the last lecture, we have seen how plane strain fracture toughness is being determined and in the present lecture, we will continue with that and will then move slowly towards uh, the next step towards plane stress fracture toughness testing. So, following are the concepts that will be covered in this lecture, apart from the typical method that we have discussed in the last class, uh, we will also show that uh, other fracture toughness testing method particularly for brittle materials such as uh, short rod or short bar method or indentation method. And we will also discuss about the uh, difficulties with K1C testing and then we will move on to the plain stress uh, methods of fracture toughness testing. And uh, for this, we will uh, see the interaction between the G and the R curve. So, before we proceed further to continue from uh, the last lecture, let us solve a numerical uh, on the plain strain fracture toughness testing what we do in the laboratory. So, here is a problem statement which says that uh, there is a steel alloy which is having fracture toughness value of 60 MPa root meter. Okay, we need to test the fracture toughness of this material in a lab scale machine and uh, we are using a compact tension specimen which is having the thickness, crack length and width of 1 centimeter, 3 centimeter and 6 centimeter respectively. So, for clarity let me also write it one more time that B corresponds to thickness, A is the crack length. and W is the width of the CT specimen which are respectively given as 1, 3 and 6 centimeters. Now, for CT specimen the relationship between P and K and F A by W function of A by W has also been provided. So, what we see here is uh, that this function of A by W stands on this ratio of A by W. So, let us uh, figure this out first. So, A by W is actually nothing but 3 by 6 centimeter which makes it 0 0.5. Okay. So, if we simply plug in the values of uh, 0.5 to this relation, let me just write it down for convenience. So, this F A by W comes around so, this is 2.5 and 0 0.5 to the power of 1.5. So, this is the front part and then we will be having 0 0.886 plus 4.64 into 0 0.5. So, it is a simple calculation although there are a lot of parameters. So, we have to do this a little bit carefully. Okay, let me write it down here. So, 14.72 into 0 0.5 cube minus 5.6 0 0.5 to the power of 4. So, if we simply solve this, this comes around 9.6. I am not doing the calculation here, but you can simply use a calculator and find this out quite straightforward. 
So, it is coming around 9.66. Let me write it down a little bit clearly. So, F A by W is 9.66. If such is the case, then let us see the P value. So, another thing we have to be carefully considered here are the units. So, the fracture toughness of this material or K or K 1 C for that matter is given as 60 MPa root meter. So, since we are talking about the relation between load and uh, fracture toughness. Uh, so, the typical unit of load that is being used is Newton and uh, if we are talking about MPa then uh, that is equivalent to 10 to the power of uh, 6 Newton per meter square. So, we better should write down K as 60 into 10 to the power of 6. Possible root meter. So, if we write that we simply can use this relation as 60 into 10 to the power of 6 that is given by P by B, B is uh, the thickness which is 1 into 10 to the power of minus 2, everything in for the dimension of length should be in meter and W is 6. So, that is root over 6 into 10 to the power of minus 2 and then the function of A by W which is 9.66. So, if we just solve this, let me do the denominator first. Okay. So, P comes around 15214.2 Newton and for convenience, we should better represent this as 15.2 kilo Newton. Okay. So, that is what is uh, we require, we require the load capacity of 15.2 kilo Newton machine. This is very important, often we need to determine that what is the maximum load level that will be used and for, with that we can figure out that whatever load capacity machines we are uh, having whether that will be sufficient or not. This also varies if we are uh, changing the specimen type. For example, instead of uh, compact tension specimen, if we are using a center uh, crack tension specimen CCT or an ACNB specimen single edge notch beam and having these different parameters by knowing this relation uh, between K and P and the function of A by W which as I mentioned in the last lecture are provided. The, either the ASTM handbooks or also in the appendix of uh, any of the mechanical behavior uh, books or fracture mechanics book. You can easily get that and based on that we can determine. Now, this is very important since this course is not only on the theoretical concept, but we have to use it for practical uh, experimental part to determine the failure mode and often the whether the fracture toughness values has been met by the component or structure the failed one we need to often do this kind of analogies. Okay. So, uh, with this let us move on to some other methods by which uh, fracture toughness is measured particularly for brittle materials. Now, the problem that we cannot use the method that we have discussed in the last lecture is that in case of brittle material it is very difficult to uh, machine a notch or certain configuration. So, uh, that is why we go for a little bit simpler method where the specimen preparation is not that difficult to uh, go ahead with the fracture toughness testing. And in uh, this case the short rod or bar method what we use is uh, 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 either a cylinder or a rectangular specimens and we can see that there is a notch also a chevron notch here uh, which can be machined the way it can be machined in a brittle material and then what we do is we push a wedge this triangular piece here so that the fracture happens and in turn the loads and the crack displacements are monitored. Okay, so, 
in uh, turn we can calculate the fracture toughness values as simply as this we need a, a calibration constant a so typically for the short rod configuration this constant is around 22 and also the rest of the thing pc is the critical load at the point of fracture so it is the maximum load at fracture we can get this from the instrument and b is the short rod diameter so when we are machine or uh, when we are having this specimen we already know the diameter so in this case please be sure that this is not the thickness that we are talking about b here represents the short rod diameter you can use the symbol d also if that is convenient okay and if we have these values particularly if we have the pc value which is the load at the point of fracture we should be able to figure out the k1c values also quite well the major advantages of this kind of technique is that we need a small and quite simpler specimen we do not need uh, much of uh, like a bigger specimen which is difficult to machine and there is no need for any fatigue pre cracking and particularly suitable for brittle materials okay so apart from that there is another method known as the indentation method or indentation fracture toughness which is also very much relevant and very much conveniently used for estimating the fracture toughness of brittle materials now this is quite straightforward and simple and we actually do not need much of a material uh, just a small piece which is well polished is enough what we need here uh, is to have a specimen which is perfectly flat both the planes are flat and it is plane parallel which means that there should not be any slant uh, surfaces this is particularly required because when we are indenting we are developing we are providing the force at a particular point and if there is any change in the topology that will lead to a uh, erroneous results so we should take a flat and a very well polished uh, sample smooth sample surface and we can indent this with either a noob indenter or a vickers indenter so both of these are sharp indenters sharp means which has a very pointed indenter tip in case of metallic materials it will simply indent and it will leave us a impression uh, metallic or ductile materials and from which we can determine their hardness as well as sometimes elastic modulus in case of brittle material this is not so straightforward rather it cracks okay from the edges from this corners of the indent impression it typically cracks and we can determine this crack length from the center to the edge of this crack this is termed as c okay from the center of the impression till the edge of the impression so this is termed as c and if we know that we also need to know the elastic modulus okay we can either use the literature values from references as the elastic modulus or in case the indentation is an instrumented one okay instrumented one instrumented indentation means where we can get the load versus displacement curve in case we are using an instrumented indenter which gives a load displacement or depth of penetration actually depth of penetration curve if we are obtaining that we should be able to figure out the elastic modulus also for the same material at the same load level so that will be more relevant to use but in case we are using a macro vickers or a micro vickers which is not having this instrument and indentation facility then we can typically use the elastic modulus of the material from any standard reference journal okay also h is the hardness which we can get from the indentation test itself Okay, so these two values typically are generated from the indentation test itself p is the load level which again we can record uh, from the instrument during the experiment and c as i mentioned is the crack length so we can put it in such uh, relations and we should be able to find out the kc alpha is once again a constant and uh, typical values of alpha is something like 0.16 okay 
So, these are also some of the other methods which are used for estimating the fracture toughness. The main advantages of uh, this are as follows, there is no specimen preparation is required and it is quite easy to, to handle the specimen as well as to perform the experiment. Okay. Now, coming back to the, the, the very basic and the typical K1C testing that are particularly used for a wide variant of materials, we should be also aware of what are the main disadvantages of K1C testing. Okay. We already know about the advantages in the sense that plain strain fracture toughness testing gives us the lowest value and the constant value which is not bound to change and we can quote that as a materials property, but at the same time we should be also aware of the, uh, the disadvantages of this testing. First of all, the, the major uh, disadvantage is that to maintain the validity of the K1C that, that is to make the RY typically very, very small actually 1 50th time the thickness of the specimen that is what we have seen in the last lecture. So, for that we need to have very, very uh, large specimen with very large thickness. Okay. Especially the more ductile the material is, larger will be the plastic deformation at a certain load and that will make uh, us use a even thicker specimen uh, to get the valid plane strain condition to be active. Right? So, that means that more ductile the material is, we will need more and more bigger specimen. So, that is sometimes quite difficult to get considering the kind of material that we are talking about considering the material being expensive and difficult to machine as well as to handle that also makes it quite difficult. And not only that we have also uh, seen in this numerical that we have solved in this class that we need a certain high uh, load capacity for testing. Of course, this is in comparison to the plain stress condition or have we used a thinner specimen, but if we are using a thinner specimen may need a lower load capacity machine, but then the plain strain condition will not be achieved. So, uh, to make it to our advantage, what we do typically is to use specimens like the compact tension specimen. We have already seen that compact tension specimen has a higher value of y, the geometrical param parameter being as high as around 4 to 5. So, that makes the usage of the load quite less, but still in case of plain strain fracture toughness testing and in case the material is quite ductile, then uh, we need very large specimen and that will require very high load capacity machine. So, for that we uh, have to go ahead with the plain stress kind of testing. And again uh, for the case of plain stress fracture toughness testing, first of all we require thin specimen and particularly this is valid or this is uh, to be done for materials uh, or for the failure mode in which the plastic zone size is uh, not smaller than the thickness. It is actually uh, it almost equivalent or even it could be, be uh, bigger than the thickness of the specimen. Then the plane strain condition is not valid anymore and we have to look for plane stress fracture toughness testing. So, way to use this uh, or to employ this concept is uh, by using the G curve and the R curve. Okay, let me uh, elaborate on the G curve. So, G, uh, the term G is the strain energy release rate. We are already familiar with this term according to the Arvin's modification. We have seen that how G is uh, related to both gamma S and gamma P, which means that it is already taking care of the plastic deformation part itself. So, at least for those materials where there is certain amount of ductility. So, G actually uh, is considered as the driving force for crack growth. Okay. On the other hand, there is something known as the R curve. So, R stands for the resistance to uh, crack propagation as a function of crack growth. Okay. So, if we plot this uh, both G and R curve together, we should be able to figure out the point at which uh, the G and R is equivalent that is actually the fracture point. So, R is directly proportional to the plastic zone size, hmm. R is the resistance to crack growth, more is the plastic zone actually the crack is being stopped being hindered by this plastic zone. So, plastic zone 
avoids the growth of the crack. So, in that sense plastic zone is beneficial. We always prefer to have some amount of plastic deformation prior to fracture. That means that uh, ductile fracture is preferred uh, to brittle fracture. Okay. Now, R being the resistance to crack growth, more is the plastic zone, more is the R. Or in other word, we can also say that if A is increased, the crack length is increasing, uh, higher crack length will lead to higher plastic deformation zone also, that means R is also increasing. On the other hand, G which is the strain energy release rate, which acts as the driving force for the crack growth. So, that also increases as we are increasing the sigma value or the applied stress value. So, we have to tally this. What happens at the point of fracture is that at uh, this failure, the rate of change in the elastic energy release rate or the strain energy release rate, which acts as the driving force for crack growth. And on the other hand, R acts as the resistance to crack growth. Okay. So, this 2 has to be tallied. Okay. And at the point of failure, these 2 are getting equal values and then only fracture can come. So, we have seen that at the point of failure, this G and uh, which acts as the driving force for the crack growth gets equal to the resistance to crack growth. So, if we want to draw that, we will have a graph something like this where the y axis is either G or R and let us say x axis is the crack length. Let us say there is a starting or uh, the initial crack length of something like A0 and in this case the resistance to crack growth will be like this. So, that is the R curve. On the other hand, uh, for the G curve, we are getting straight linear curve something like this. Let us say this is for G, we name this G1 for a stress value of sigma 1. If we increase the stress value, we are getting a different G curve with different slope and the point at which it touches the R curve that is the point of failure. So, let us name this as G2 for a stress value of sigma 2. So, this particular one here is termed as GC or we can term this as plane stress fracture toughness. So, that is the point when the crack will go to fracture. Now, uh, in case of brittle materials however, the crack is not supposed to grow. So, there should not be any growth of the crack. On the other hand, in case the G value exceeds the R value, so the amount of energy that is being released exceeds the resistance to crack growth, then there will be some growth in the crack and plain stress fracture toughness is just at the point of this tangency. So, if we want to see this how it looks different for the brittle and the ductile material, we will see that this is for a brittle material. Once again, we have the G and the R on the y axis and A on the x axis and let us say we have a starting notch of A0. So, that is the initial notch length notch or crack length and in case of brittle material actually the uh, resistance curve will look something like this. At this point there will be no fracture until it reaches certain value of R and then once it reaches there will be a instantaneous fracture catastrophic one. However, the G, the G curve on the other hand uh, at this point will be something like this and at this point there uh, they will be tangent and there will be fracture. If we are applying lower load value, then the G could be 
somewhere here also, but since uh, this is not exactly the tangential position there will be no fracture. So, this is for a brittle material. On the other hand, if we are or brittle failure, if we are talking about the ductile failure, it will be something like this once again the G and the R on the y axis, A on the x axis and we are starting with certain value of A0 and in this case this will be the R curve for the ductile material and G curve can have different values as I explain. Now, let us say we have a G something like this initially and for that this point of intersection at this point of intersection between G and R the crack is supposed to grow. So, this was A0 and let us name this as A1 for G1. So, this is the amount of crack uh, length that will be grown. So, the crack will grow from A0 to A1 if we are applying a G value of G1. On the other hand, if we are still increasing the stress value and there is a tangent, so that is typically, let us name this as G C or this particular value of G is known as G C or this one should be G 2. So, this particular point where the tangent occurs between G and the R curve is the G C. So, that is how we can figure out the increase in the crack length which however was not there in case of the brittle failure. Okay. Now, not only that plane stress fracture toughness also changes uh, if we are changing the dimension of the uh, component or the specimen we have already seen that it is not a constant value. So, either if we are changing the initial crack length A0 you can see that there are three different crack lengths that are being shown here A1, A2 and A3 and for each of these cases the tangential value changes and that leads to slight alteration in the respective GC values also. Okay. Although not that prominent the major change in the GC values will materialize if we change the specimen dimension like the thickness of the specimen or the width of the specimen. In this case the width uh, relation has been uh, shown where width for the component 3 is much much greater than that of uh, component 2 and 1 respectively. And what we see is that this values that uh, the shape of the G curve also changes and uh, that leads to a significant change in the value of the G C. So, G C 1, G C 2 and G C 3 will be significantly different. Okay. Uh, and not to mention that whenever there is change in the applied stress as we have seen that how the G curve changes. So, that will lead to a change in the uh, the tangent shell position also if we are changing the applied stress values. Okay. So, uh, with this let us conclude this lecture. So, what we have understood here is that uh, the short rod or bar and the indentation methods are some of the other ways by which we can estimate the fracture toughness particularly for brittle materials. These are advantageous uh, considering that we do not need a complicated specimen dimension or uh, higher load capacity machine. Typical plane strain fracture toughness testing in the lab scale, it uh, does have some uh, kind of disadvantages which includes uh, bigger specimen and as well as higher load capacity machine. Also, uh, we have seen that uh, for thinner specimen or the material which has significant ductile deformation, we would prefer plane stress fracture toughness testing and one of the ways to do that is by equating the rate in of change in the elastic energy release rate to the uh, resistance to crack growth. So, these are some of the references used and thank you very much.